and let me check out the oil and what are you serious this oil is clean something's got to be wrong this oil is clean like it was just changed yesterday i am in awe right now like you could take a quick look at the napkin and see it's a very light brown color dude something's not right this is not what i expected when i bought a salvage car the oil is clean like what what is going wow look that's that was the first sign that you know i got a good car something's good about this car the oil is clean and i think i'm just totally messed up by the fact that the oil was clean like what that's right project family i mean something didn't seem right i needed to dig and there's a couple of things that i knew before buying the car uh, i knew that the car was for sale last year and i knew the price what the car was so i i knew that the car had some good value and the only thing I didn't know was I didn't know how much the previous owner trashed the car in one year in like, I don't know, 5,000 miles. Like how much damage can you do? You could do a lot. But that was one of the risks that, that I ran. So as I was cleaning out the uh, glove compartment, I found a receipt. And what was on this receipt, I mean, just shocked me. It made me feel really good. So I cannot share the actual receipt with you because it had a lot of the personal information from the prior owner. But this is what I'll say. I can't believe this. Uh, almost a year ago today, you know, before I even get into it, it's like going to the casino. You never know what you're going to get. And that's kind of what you're finding at these salvage auctions. Sometimes you get a good one. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it takes you a while to figure out if you want. But let me tell you about this one. So almost a year ago today this car went in for some pretty decent service so just for materials itself uh, it went through a fuel system cleaner $40 uh, the rear left disc brakes $200 the rear right disc brakes $200 and then there's another adder for a ceramic pad uh, for $130 the brake pad sensor on the rear was uh, actually both of them, left and right. That was a total of $85. The actual oil filter with an O-ring was $25. The oil itself is $83, which I know that car takes a lot of oil. The brake fluid was $40. Uh, a couple of cleaners, uh, about $100 for some cleaners. And then an additive for $20, they replaced a bulb, and they replaced two deck lid lift supports. Obviously not in the front because those are faulty, but at least I have an idea how much they cost. They're around $87 for both of them. Now that was just for parts. Let's look at some labor to install the parts that I just read off to you. So to do all of the change engine oil filter fluids, all that stuff, that's $135 labor in addition to the price that I told you for the oil filter and the oil. To service the transmission, that was $105. So probably one of those clean those additives and cleaners was all for the transmission. The labor to service the rear brakes let me see, service rear brake pads, replace rotors, service calipers, replace pad wear sensor, okay, that was $315. Then they did some work to the headlamp, was $140, but like I said, uh, right front, that's all trashed. Maybe I'll just take the bulb out. There's a new bulb in there, and that bulb is $145. The labor to flush the brake fluid and top off the master brake cylinder was $135. Perform injection cleaning, $140. The total bill, and I did round up on a lot of these figures, the total bill for the service that was done on this car only a year ago today was $2,000. Two 
thousand dollars worth of work now as i was taking off the rotors and i was actually inspecting it with boogeyman fpv yes he came check it out for me we looked at the calipers and we looked at the pads and was like whoa this is this looks pretty decent there's a lot of meat left on these pads why because it was just done a year ago it was just done so when initially I pulled out the dipstick and I looked at the color of the fluid and I was like, oh my gosh, I got a deal. That's because this work was just done. It was done a year ago and less than 1,000 miles ago. Yes, I said it, 1,000 miles. 1,000 miles ago, we had all this work done. Now, I haven't named the car yet, but um, I got to figure out a name because she has a gender already she's she's turning into a gem so i mentioned that this car was uh for sale a year ago a thousand miles ago and uh i was able to find the actual posting so this is what the car is looked like a year ago and hopefully this is what this car will look like when i'm finished with it now uh, i want to tell you guys one more thing that um that turned me on to this car so I i've been looking for cars for a while and there's a lot of uh bad cars out there with engines that just sound horrendous for example uh, i was on facebook marketplace and i found a car it was uh I'm not even going to give all the details, but it was a great car. It was a cabriolet convertible. It had a hard top, which is something I, I, I was looking for. And when I asked the owner for uh, the sound, I want to hear what the car sounds like running. Uh, this is what he sent me. Obviously, I can't show you the picture of the car, but this is what it sounds like. I'm going to let you hear it again. And then right after playing that clanker, I'm going to play what this car sounded like. I mean, you can close your eyes and hear the difference. So the reason why you're hearing clanking is uh, engines have a lot of metal parts. And these metal parts require lubrication to keep them from banging against each other. Sometimes these parts also get a little loose, which will allow them to bang. So what you're hearing now is you're hearing a lot of banging going on in one engine and not a lot of banging in the other. So which engine would you buy? So that was another reason why I bought this car. So, and this concludes our video. <laughs> I just hit the microphone against my mouth. This concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.